I understand we have a quorum this morning. And uh, Senator Capito, if you're ready to rock and roll, I think uh, I am as well. Uh, and I'm happy to call this uh, business meeting to order as we prepare to consider three nominations, 10 General Service Administration measures, and our bipartisan service transportation reauthorization bill. And I want to begin by observing uh, that the three nominees whose names are before Shannon Estenos, Radhika Fox, and Michal Friedhoff are all extremely well qualified for the positions to which they've been nominated. When our uh, committee met a, a few weeks ago to hear from the nominees, it was, for me, uh, wonderful. It was heartwarming. And uh, to just to be joined by a panel of uh, such bright, uh, dedicated, well-spoken public servants and, and, and by members of their, of their uh, families. It was, uh, for some of us, uh, especially special uh, to hear uh, from Michal Friedhoff, Dr. Michal Friedhoff, who served as an invaluable member of our EPW team and as a key advisor to Senator Markey and to, to me uh, for some time. And I'm grateful that Michal and her fellow nominees, Radhika and Shannon, are willing to serve in these new roles and uh, I know that our nation will be the better for it. I strongly urge all of our colleagues to join me in today in advancing their nominations to the full Senate. I'm also uh, pleased that we are considering a set of uh, 10 General Service Administration measures, which we will be considering on block. These are common sense resolutions that I hope all of us will support. And now I'd like to spend the remainder of my time this morning uh, briefly addressing our service transportation reauthorization bill that we are considering here today. Service Transportation Reauthorization Act of 2021 is the result of months of hard work and a genuine team effort on which I am pleased to join with Senator Capito, Senator Cardin, Senator Creamer, our respective staffs, and many members of this committee. The bill before us today is a testament to our team's relentless drive and tireless commitment to crafting a bipartisan agreement that will enable us to create a transportation system that the 21st century will require if the U.S. is to remain a leader among nations. This reauthorization bill before us today calls for historic levels of highway funding, $303.5 billion worth over the next five years. That's about 34, 35 percent above the last five-year uh, reauthorization for service transportation. This bill also commits $18 billion toward reducing our carbon emissions, as well as uh, $500 million to mitigate climate impacts on the most vulnerable among us, typically communities of color, tribal communities, and other disadvantaged communities. The bill would also provide $500 million to upgrade our existing transportation infrastructure to withstand the inevitable effects of our changing climate. As most of us know, the transportation sector is the largest source of carbon emissions in our nation. So if we want to preserve our planet for our children and grandchildren, I know we do, it's imperative that we tackle this major contributor to the climate crisis. This bill before us today helps put us on the right track with an $18 billion climate title of which $2.5 billion is dedicated to building electric vehicle charging and hydrogen fueling stations on highways and in locations like schools and workplaces, parks, and publicly accessible areas for communities. Our bill also tax tackles another serious challenge, that of safety. Bicycling and walking are affordable and healthy modes of transportation, but far too many Americans live in neighborhoods where there are no safe bike lanes or crosswalks. In 2019 alone, over 7,000 pedestrians and bicyclists lost their lives in traffic accidents just in one year. So I'm delighted that our bill provides a 70% increase in funding for programs that de develop safe, accessible pedestrian and bicycle pathways across our nation, while also committing to providing $16.8 billion in funding for highway safety improvements. The third challenge our bill seeks to address is, is uh, historic inequity in transportation investments. We know that past investments in transportation programs have left far too many Americans, especially those in communities of color, uh, behind. To that end, our bill focuses on investments to lift up all communities. That's why we've included provisions from the Reconnecting Communities Act legislation I authored, co-authored with Senators Van Hollen and Cardin to address past transportation infrastructure projects that have divided and harmed too many neighborhoods across our nation. In my hometown of Wilmington, Delaware, construction of I-95 in the 1960s and 1970s through the city literally tore many communities apart, cutting off access to neighborhoods, parks, economic opportunity. 
and we can begin to help heal those wounds with the project we enable in this legislation. I'm proud that our bill focuses on these critical issues of climate, safety, and equity, and does so in bipartisan ways that will put our transportation programs on the right track for the next five years. But the work doesn't stop here. It's imperative that our sister Senate committees, Banking, Commerce, and Finance, act quickly on their portions of the service transportation reauthorization so we can get this bill across the finish line before the current law expires on September 30th. I will continue to work with our colleagues on those committees to encourage them to act without delay, especially since we've taken action here in record time with our highway bill. The fast timeline that led to this markup today is not by chance. It's a reflection of our commitment to getting the work done, a commitment shared by President Biden. Back in February, the President invited Senator Capito, Senator Inhofe, Senator Cardin, and myself to the White House to discuss service transportation reauthorization. I think that may have been his first meeting with the members of the United States Senate following his inauguration. He asked us if we could get uh, this bill done by Memorial Day. Originally, we thought we maybe could get it done by July 4th, but we're working hard to, to try to reach the goal of Memorial Day. Today, we're poised to deliver on uh, that request. Uh, let me be clear, though, there's still a lot of work to be done on infrastructure in this Congress. We know that. The President's Jobs Plan identifies a number of transformational investments to strengthen our economy. They include much more than we could ever cover within our committee's jurisdiction and within this bill, from clean energy, tax credits to inner city passenger rail to transit and much more. But the first step, the first step in realizing that division is ensuring that our transportation programs are running smoothly and working efficiently. And that's why our service transportation bill is so critical. With this legislation, we can begin to modernize our highway programs, do so with policies to address safety, equity, and climate at the same time, and create one heck of a lot of jobs. It's a vital uh, foundation for the President's American's Jobs Plan and a remarkable bipartisan achievement. And with that, I want to turn to my friend, my West Virginia buddy, mm -hmm. and our colleague, our ranking member with whom I've been privileged to work uh, on this uh, legislation. I just want to say to everybody who's been a part of this, thank you. Terrific job. And uh, the fall, we've had this kind of demonstra leadership demonstrated when Senator Inhofe was, was in charge of this committee and by working with Barbara Boxer and others, we've had it with Don Barrasso, and uh, I think we've done it again. And uh, we have, hopefully we'll still be saying that an hour from now. <laughs> but, but I think uh, we're off to a good start today, and I want to thank everyone who's uh, responsible for that. Senator Capito. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Carper, and thank everybody who's here today for calling this business meeting and for your ongoing commitment to a bipartisan process uh, for this bill that we are considering today, the Surface Transportation Reauthorization Act of 2021. I have always been optimistic that we would get here, but I am absolutely thrilled that we are reached a bipartisan agreement that will address our nation's surface transportation needs. I also want to provide special thanks to Senator Cardin and to Senator Kramer, uh, for, uh, uh, who lead the subcommittee on transportation and infrastructure. Their support and partnership during this process was absolutely instrumental in helping us to reach an agreement. So thank you both. I also want to thank our staff, Mr. Chairman. I know they've spent a lot of nights, long nights, uh, for their commitment to this process and for the long hours and hard work uh, that they have dedicated to this bill. Today proves that once again that we can come together to develop a bill that reflects input from both parties and the stakeholder communities. This has been one of my top priorities as ranking member of this committee. Since the start of this process, I've been focused on policies that, one, enable long-term investment in our nation's roads and bridges in a fiscally responsible manner, two, provide certainty and flexibility in our states and other partners, for our states and other partners, and Excuse three, me. keep the federal interest focused on providing a connected network of roads and bridges to ensure that all communities and economies can thrive. Additionally, I, I, I've been looking to facilitate the efficient delivery of projects in order to improve the safety and resiliency of our surface transportation system and to drive innovation to help pave the way for the surface transportation system of the future. I'm proud to say that this bill uh, meets many and accomplishes many of these goals. I'd like to take a few minutes to share some of the highlights of our bipartisan legislation. It's a five-year bill that presents significant funding levels, $303.5 billion out of the Highway Trust Fund. It will ensure long-term investment in our nation's roads and bridges while providing states and communities the flexibility that they need to address their unique transportation needs. 
The bill will distribute 90% of total funding to states through formula, giving the states the flexibility and the certainty necessary to get those projects in the years ahead. This funding distribution will benefit all parts of the country, including both urban and rural areas. I'm particularly excited about the $2 billion Rural Surface Transportation Grant Program that will provide competitive grants for projects that increase connectivity and generate economic growth in rural America. Among the projects eligible for a grant under this project are projects that will further the completion of the Appalachian Development Highway System. Completing this ADHS is absolutely essential to me and to my home state of West Virginia. Finishing this will better connect West Virginia and will open up significant economic opportunities. So passage of this bill is a big step in that direction. This bill will provide significant funding for bridges through a new grant program, which also is important to my state, but everybody's state here in, and certainly in Delaware as well. The bill also provides provisions that will pro improve the project delivery process for states and other partners. Notably, we codified the one federal decision, which will provide more accountability to the environmental review and permitting process by including page limits and joint agency schedules for projects within the goal of completing environmental uh, reviews in two years. This bill also requires reporting timelines on the NEPA, on NEPA, which is the um, National Environmental Permitting Authority. Okay. Yes. All right, it redu this reduces our paperwork board burdens and provides opportunity for the adoption of categorical exclusions between agencies through rulemaking. Safety, as this chairman says, is a top priority that we all share. To address a variety of safety needs, we increased funding of the Highway Safety Improvement po uh, Program and provided state fundings that carry out resiliency improvements to their roads and bridges and improve evacuation routes. There is a lot in this bill for both sides and for all communities, uh, no matter the size or region of this, of their, in the, in the country. It represents the true give and take, I think, of bipartisan compromise. Most importantly, it will drive economic growth and in the future create jobs while also improving the quality of life of those uh, in our country. We share a common goal, getting a bipartisan reauthorization bill across the finish line before the expiration of the FAST Act. Today is an important step in that process. Finally, today, uh, the, com the committee will be voting on other important committee matters, including 10 GSA resolutions. I am pleased to, su to support the nominations of Shannon Esternos to be Secretary, Assistant Secretary for Fish and Wildlife and Parks to the Department of Interior, uh, Michal Friedhoff to be Assistant Administrator for Chemical Safety and Pollution Prevention at EPA, and while I have enjoyed getting to know Radhika Fox and am impressed by her qualifications, she would, she would not commit to maintaining the navigable waters protection rule issued in 2020, but she also would not state that the 2015 waters of the U.S. rule was overreaching. Very vague in her answers. So for that policy reason, I cannot support her nomination today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back my time. Well, two out of three ain't bad. So, thank you. All righty. Speaking of uh, noms, let's, uh, let's go through uh, three of them right now. And um, I want to uh, go on. Next, I want to call a presidential nomination 444, Radhika Fox of California to be Assistant Administrator for Water of the Environmental Protection Agency. I move to approve and report the nomination favorably to the Senate. Is there a second? second. It's been moved and seconded. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Bozeman. Yes. Mrs. Capito. Mrs. Capito. I'm sorry, this is Radhika Fox. This is Radhika Fox, yes. You have one third, you'll give you a third chance if you want. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Proceed, to, proceed with the roll call. Yes. Mr. Cardin. Aye. Mr. Kramer. Ms. Duckworth. Aye. Ms. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Graham. <clears throat> Mr. Enhoff. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Lemus. Aye. Mr. Markey. Aye. 
Mr. Merkley. Aye. Mr. Padilla. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Shelby. Aye. Ms. Stabenow. Aye. Mr. Sullivan. Aye. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Mr. Wicker. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the yeas are 14, the nays are 6. All right. With uh, that, then the, uh, the uh, nomination has been approved, and uh, we report the nomination favorably to the Senate. Um, next, I want to call up uh, presidential nomination 407, Mihal, Dr. Mihal, Ilana Friedhoff. I've known Mihal for a number of years. I didn't know she had a middle name, and it's Ilana Eddie. And uh, so Michal, one uh, who's worked close with a, a lot of us in our staffs. Michal has been uh, nominated to be the Assistant Administrator for Chemical Safety and Pollution Prevention of the Environmental Protection Agency. I move to approve and report the nomination favorably to the Senate. Is there a second? Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Bozeman. Yes. Mrs. Capito. Yes. Mr. Cardin. Aye. Mr. Kramer. Aye. Ms. Duckworth. Aye. Ms. Ernst. Mr. Graham, Aye. Mr. Enhoff, Aye. Mr. Kelly, Aye. Ms. Lummis, Aye. Mr. Markey, Aye. Mr. Merkley, Aye. Mr. Padilla, Aye. Mr. Sanders, Aye. Mr. Shelby, Aye. Ms. Stabenow, Aye. Mr. Sullivan, Aye. Mr. Whitehouse, Aye. Mr. Wicker, Aye. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, yeas are 19, the nays are 1. With that, the, uh, the nomination is uh, approved. Thank you all. Final nomination we consider this morning is presidential nomination 374, Shannon Estenos of Florida to be Assistant Secretary of Fish and Wildlife and Parks of the Department of Interior. I move to approve and report the nomination favorably to the Senate. Is there a second? Been moved and seconded. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Bozeman. Mrs. Capito. Aye. Mr. Cardin. Aye. Mr. Kramer. Aye. Ms. Duckworth. Aye. Ms. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Enhoff. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Lummis. Aye. Mr. Markey. Aye. Mr. Merkley. Aye. Mr. Padilla. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Shelby. Aye. Ms. Stabenow. Mr. Sullivan. Aye. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Mr. Wicker. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Aye. The chairman, the yeas are 19, the nays are 1. And with that, uh, the nomination is confirmed. Colleagues, thank you all. There was a three terrific nominees in I'm delighted they're going to have the opportunity to serve us and to work with us going forward. Well, I'd li like now to turn to the Service uh, Transportation Reauthorization, uh, Reauthorization Act of 2021. On Saturday, I uh, circulated the uh, legislation that had been developed with Senator Capito and her staff. Since that time, we have worked to refine the legislation. Those refinements are embodied in the Carper Capito Cardin Kramer substitute amendment that was circulated to all offices yesterday. Because this amendment represents non controversial changes from the legislation circulated on Saturday, by unanimous consent, the substitute amendment is considered the base text for purpose of today's markup. Hearing no objections? Mr. Chairman? Sword, sword. yes. Reserving the right to object? Yes, go ahead. Uh, may I note that um, I would like it recorded that were there a vote in this matter, I would be a no vote on the provision embedded in this amendment that creates first and second class states for purposes of the infra program. But I will not object. I thank, this. I thank the colleague. Uh, I understand uh, 
Senator Markey has an amendment he'd like to offer. Is that right, Senator Markey? Yes, I have, I have an amendment, uh, Mr. Chairman. It's uh, Markey Wait. number five. Yeah, please offer your amendment. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment is a bipartisan proposal I'm making for myself and Senator Sullivan, which would insert a modified version of our legislation, the Connecting America's Active Transportation System Act, as a new program in the Surface Transportation Reauthorization Act. Our amendment will dedicate $200 million in federal funds annually for grants to connect walking and biking infrastructure into active transportation networks that allow people to reach destinations uh, within a community as well as travel between communities without needing a car. Uh, but obviously it also uh, has a, a big impact on, on uh, uh, recreational uh, sport uh, biking and skiing uh, and uh, bike trails and other trails that would uh, also be constructed. So it's, it's something that uh, is applicable to every state uh, in our country. Um, and adding this uh, bipartisan legislation to our overall package is both common sense uh, and uh, essential. So I, uh, I urge uh, support um, uh, for this um, amendment uh, because no matter your age, your ability, uh, people will be able to reach their destinations through affordable and healthy travel options. So I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, Senator Sullivan, would you, would you like to comment, please? Chairman, yes, uh, thank you. And I want to th thank my friend Senator Markey for uh, his leadership on this amendment. Um, you know, for all of us who love the great outdoors, this is a great opportunity to have more trails uh, for pedestrians, bikes. This is something that's very uh, uh, much looked upon favorably in my state, and I think in most states here, particularly uh, as people are trying to get outside after the pandemic. Uh, we've, we've worked with everybody. There were some concerns uh, on my side of the aisle that um, there was uh, too much dedicated to this, so we scaled back the amendment uh, quite a lot, actually. So I would encourage strong bipartisan vote on this uh, Marky e. Sullivan Amendment. So anyone else that care to comment on this? Uh, yes, Senator from Illinois. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I thank you uh, th for the bipartisan amendment. Uh, I, unfortunately for you all, will be opposing this amendment for several reasons, uh, and it's not because I'm anti-bike or pedestrian trails, because if you look at the guts of this bill that we worked on, we took very careful considerations to uh, include new programs and modifications to existing programs that I think will advance the goals of this amendment. Uh, significantly, the bill increases the amount of funding for transportation alternatives. It was, I believe, at 4.2 uh, in the, in the uh, previous iteration. It, also, it provides $7.2 billion, the bill that we're voting on right now, for eligible projects, including bicycle and pedestrian <coughs> projects and recreational trail projects. It also provides another $6.4 billion for the new carbon reduction program, which also has eligibilities for bicycle and pedestrian projects. There are also new requirements in here for our states and our metropolitan planning organization to fund activities for complete streets, which are defined as providing the, quote, safe and adequate accommodation of pedestrians and bicycles, among other users. There were three examples there of where we have addressed, I think, what the gentleman's amendment is trying to achieve. So I see the amendment is duplicative and unnecessary. It's another billion dollars. I, I appreciate the fact that the amount is less than uh, the original amendment, but I do believe that we have dedicated not just policy, but a lot of funding to achieve the, um, the goals of this amendment. So I would strongly urge a no vote. Senator Duckworth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to uh, speak in support of the amendment. I, one of the things that we haven't discussed here is the fact that these types of initiatives actually help people with disabilities significantly by creating an interconnected rail pedestrian uh, transportation infrastructure network. What you're actually doing is creating a new infrastructure for the people um, who use wheelchairs and would like to be able to move around more easily. And if we just re depend on existing transportation infrastructure, it's, it's never quite enough. You know, you're waiting for paratransit to come. They only come once or twice. You can't get to a bus stop 
always. And so having something like this will actually allow persons with disabilities greater freedom, greater access, which is going to be ever more re relevant as our baby boomers age and become folks who are the, the, the population of people who are going to be using wheelchairs and assistive uh, movement devices is only going to be growing. And we're going to see a huge increase in, our, in the demographics of this country. So I really do support this amendment because it will have that effect of helping persons with disabilities. Would the Senator yield? I will. I thank the Senator. And her point is, is correct. Uh, this isn't creating uh, just kind of isolated bike paths. This is actually connecting everything together so that it, it, there, there is kind of an interoperability of our transportation system, uh, especially for those that uh, need it the most. So, um, so you're, you're right on point in terms of what the goal of this is. It's a new program with, um, uh, with something that is much needed. Yeah. Would other senators like to be recognized on this uh, amendment? Uh, hearing none, uh, would the clerk uh, please call the roll? The clerk call the roll. Mr. Bozeman. No. Mrs. Capito. No. Mr. Cardin. No. Mr. Kramer. No. Ms. Duckworth. No. Ms. Ernst. No. Mr. Graham. No. Mr. Inhofe. No. Mr. Kelly. No. Ms. Lemus. Mr. Markey. Aye. Mr. Merkley. Aye. Mr. Padilla. Aye. Mr. Sanders. Aye. Mr. Shelby. Aye. Ms. Stabenow. Aye. Mr. Sullivan. Aye. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Mr. Wicker. Aye. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the yeas are 11, the nays are 9. The amendment is uh, agreed to. More than, uh, I, I, to, to Senator uh, Capito's point, uh, the, the, uh, we have nothing to be ashamed of in this bill, we're, even without the Markey Amendment, with the, the, the monies that we're investing in this, in this very area. And I just want to make that clear. And uh, for some, this was a bridge too far, but uh, your, amendment has, your amendment has passed in, so now we're going to move on. Um, more than 90 minutes, amendments were uh, filed on this legislature, over 90. Um, over the last 24 hours, the committee staff have determined which of these amendments are non-controversial and acceptable to both sides. Most of them are. This morning, the committee had circulated a list of these amendments. Senator Capito and I have agreed that these amendments can be considered in block and by unanimous consent. With that, I would ask uh, unanimous uh, consent to adopt uh, on block the amendments identified on the list provided to your offices this morning. And um, I would say, uh, make a note that Senator, I think Senator Whitehouse will, you know, may, you, you, Sheldon, do you want to reserve the right to object in order to make a brief statement to any, or have you, already, you already had a chance to do that, fair enough, there, fair enough. Okay, well, uh, hearing no objection then, so ordered. And I want to thank uh, Sheldon for, uh, for, for what you've done today. Uh, I want to thank uh, all members uh, for their engagement on this bill. I know that there's still a number of important issues that need to be resolved or improved, and I hope uh, to continue to work with all of you on these important issues uh, as, we as, as the process moves forward. To, uh, to paraphrase uh, uh, Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill, when he bounced out of office at the end of World War II uh, in the next election, uh, he was leaving uh, 10 uh, Downing Street. And he was asked by a reporter, he said, Mr. Churchill, for you, is this the end? Is this the end? And famously, he re replied, this is not the end. This is not the beginning of the end. This is the end of the, uh, the beginning. And uh, so it is here. This is the end of the beginning. We still have plenty of work to do, but one hell of a lot of work has been done. And I'm deeply grateful to all who've been a part of, uh, a, a part of that. Hold on just for a second. Ah, uh, yes, Senator Cardin. I understand that Senator Cardin yes, has sir. an amendment that he would like to discuss. Senator Cardin, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I really want to strongly endorse this bill. I want to thank the chairman and ranking member for continuing the great tradition of this committee. It was a pleasure to work with Senator Kramer on the subcommittee. I strongly endorse the bill. 
I'm going to call up Cardin Amendment Number One, uh, but I will not be asking for a vote on this amendment. Uh, Cardin Amendment Number One would add funds to critical programs that are in this bill to be in line with President Biden's American Jobs Plan. It increases our investment in bridges so that we can begin to address the backlog we face across the country. It increases funding for the Transportation Alternative Program, which is so important to local communities, uh, to upgrade sidewalks, bike paths, and improve safety. It adds $14.5 billion to Reconnecting Community Pilot Program. We had a hearing in our subcommittee uh, in which uh, many communities brought forward highways to nowhere, including one in Baltimore City, uh, that we need to address. It adds more money for electric vehicle charging infrastructure, which will create jobs as well as reduce emissions from transportation. The leading source of greenhouse gases in this country, I know Senator Stabenow has been one of our great champions on this issue. It adds resources for the infra program so that we can continue to address freight issues and bottlenecks to improve efficiency and competitiveness in our economy. It adds funding for workforce training so that Americans are ready to participate and take advantage of the job opportunities we will create. It adds resources for safety, which is a critical priority. This year, our goal is to make a generational investment in our nation's infrastructure, and this committee has a central role to play in that effort. I'm sure every member of this committee is tired of infrastructure reports where we get poor grades. The bill we are considering today takes a critical first step, but there's more we can do to answer the call to build back better. Uh, so I will not be asking for a vote on this amendment, but as a member of this committee and as chair of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, I will continue to work to advance important transportation infrastructure projects. Senator Cardin, thank you for your leadership of our subcommittee and your work with uh, Senator Creamer to make a good team, and we're grateful to both of you. I think uh, uh, Kevin would like to be in, uh, uh, recognized. Just if you could just hold for a moment, and we'll re recognize uh, Senator Capito, and we'll come to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just briefly, uh, as many of you know, there has been a lot of talk about a lot of uh, a larger bipartisan agreement. Uh, in, in conversation with the White House and the, and, and the jobs plan. And this bill, I think, really is the anchor to those bipartisan uh, discussions. And so I appreciate everybody um, joining in to, uh, to craft something that uh, increases, as the, as the chairman noted in his opening statement, increases from the FAST Act uh, goes up 34 percent, which is very, very significant. Um, and then the, the gentleman's amendment would, would pull those numbers up another 25%. So as we talked about earlier, uh, I, I would have uh, hesitation, I would not have hesitation in voting no uh, against this if he were to bring it to a vote, but uh, I appreciate the sentiment. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Capito. Senator Kramer? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and, and Ranking Member Capito for your incredible leadership, and Senator Cardin, it has been a pleasure working with you as well. I look forward to it the continued work. Um, and I would ask uh, to bring up Kramer um, number two, amendment number two, which like Senator Cardin, I will not be asking for a vote on, but want to take just a minute to, to, to visit about it. And I think the work um, that's been done is, is remarkable. I am, like you all are, strongly supportive of the final outcome uh, of the bill. And while it may be the end of the beginning, it's a darn good beginning. Mr. Chairman, and it, I think, should serve as a great encouragement to the people who we work for, who are watching this process, and if they just accidentally stumble onto this moment, are going, wow, I didn't know they could all actually work together and get things done. And I think you're right, uh, um, Senator Capito, it, it should create some momentum for bigger things, and we've gone big today. And so, um, so we've made some progress, but that being said, I do believe that we can and should do more especially to prioritize flexibility, innovation, and transparency. The infrastructure policies that Congress promotes should, do, should be more focused on delivering results than it is about preserving archaic processes. My amendment would get to the heart of this issue. It would make a number of streamlining improvements to NEPA as it applies to certain transportation projects under Title 23. It shouldn't take longer to permit a project than to actually build it, and I'd reiterate the comments from the ranking member. You can't build back better if you can't build. My amendment also creates a pilot program to establish innovative practices for permitting reviews. This would maintain the environmental safeguards that we all support while bringing new approaches to the forefront. 
it would create a pilot program to give states flexibility in how they spend the federal allocation. And lastly, my amendment would require the development of a methodology to determine costs associated with NEPA. This is just common sense. We should have a clear understanding how much NEPA is costing taxpayers and states to comply. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, again, I think we can do better. Um, but I think we've done darn well, and I look forward to continuing to improve uh, the bill as it moves to the floor and through the process. Good. And with that, I yield. Thank you for your good work on this bill, and to your staff as well, and thank you for your comments. Uh, would um, any other uh, uh, members uh, care to? Yes, can I, mean, I just speak? want to uh, echo the comments of Senator Kramer. I think that permitting reform isn't cutting corners on environmental reviews or anything like that. It's common sense, and when you talk to governors and mayors, regardless of political party, it's always a priority of theirs because they see firsthand what happens with federal permitting that can be too burdensome and uh, can take way too much time. On average, I think in the United States, it takes almost eight to nine years to permit a bridge. That's crazy. Nine to 19 years from planning to finali finalizing highways. Nine to 19 years. That's nuts. And we wonder how we're not competing with China. Um, that's one way. You could have a $10 trillion infrastructure bill, but if we don't get to make our federal permitting more efficient, timely, and certain, none of the money is going to get deployed. So I think there's a big potential bipartisan compromise, perhaps more funding for much more aggressive permitting reforms. And I think that could be a bipartisan way to address some of these issues. Anyone else uh, wish to be recognized? All right, with uh, Senator Markey, please. Your mic microphone, we want to hear you. Can you hear me now? We sir can, certainly okay, beautiful. can. Thank you. Uh, I just want to agree with Senator Cardin that, uh, that uh, there's much more to be done, um, and the American Jobs Act does lay out the framework for what needs to be done. In this bill, for example, um, there's $2.5 billion for uh, charging stations, but we know that it will have to be seven to ten times larger an amount of money if we're going to have the 500,000 charging stations across our country. We could keep going down the, the litany of issues that have to be dealt with. Senator Cardin uh, began to outline them. Um, uh, my hope is that this is the beginning of a new era and that we're going to be able to, you know, build on this to have a much larger infrastructure bill that will uh, match kind of the full magnitude of all the problems that we're uh, faced with in our country. Um, uh, and, uh, and that would be my fervent hope. Uh, my concern is that this will be not only um, uh, the end of the beginning, but the end as well, okay? And, and we have to avoid that, and we have to uh, match, you know, our efforts to the magnitude of the challenge that we're faced with, with climate change and uh, uh, the economic challenges, uh, the infrastructure challenges in our country. So just wanted to reinforce what uh, Senator Cardin said and hope that we can begin uh, immediately towards uh, achieving that goal with a much larger package as we move forward. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you. Anyone else, please? Uh, before, uh, before I move that the committee report the uh, service transportation reauthorization, let me just take another minute. Uh, normally, uh, most of you should know I take the train to work and go back and forth just about every day. And uh, I look out the, uh, the train window, for, I, which runs parallel to 95 uh, for much of the way. And uh, a lot of people just sitting there, uh, not moving, uh, polluting, uh, but not moving. And uh, the, uh, the roads and uh, highways and bridges in this country need an enormous amount of work, an enormous amount of work. And we uh, need to invest in them, and we need to invest wisely. And I think we've had, we're put providing a, a lot of extra money, 35% more than the last five-year bill. Uh, there's, we're making some changes with the Senator Capito and others have, have pushed forward to make sure we're spending that money, uh, money more uh, wisely, maybe more prudently, and that's good. For me, the, uh, I, I, I love helping people. I know we all do. And one of the best ways you can help people is help make sure they have a job. And the legislation that we're about to vote on here is going to help uh, provide up, up, up opportunities for millions of people to work uh, directly from this legislation on roads, highways, and bridges. 
but also because we're going to be a stronger, more productive economy because of these investments that, that, that we're making. And that makes me feel great. And the last thing is that as a senator from the lowest lying state in the country, where the seas around us are rising and our state is sinking, the, the idea of uh, climate change is very, very real. And I just thank everybody for noting that and for making sure that we uh, don't ignore that in this legislation. The idea that we can somehow do good things for our planet, good things for people, putting them to work, uh, is, uh, is a day to celebrate. And lastly, I'll say, people say to me, what do you like about your committee so much? And I say, this is a workhorse committee. We're not show horses, we are workhorses. We go to work and we get things done, and we provide uh, leadership by example. And my hope is uh, that we'll report this bill out uh, with strong, maybe unanimous vote, uh, like we did 18 months ago, and that we'll send a strong signal to our sister committees, commerce, banking, finance, that uh, it's time to go to work, and they'll join us as well. And with that, um, I now move that the committee report the Service Transportation Reauthorization Act of 2021 as amended. Is there a second? Thank you. With that, uh, the clerk will call the roll. Mr. Bozeman. Aye. Mrs. Capito. Aye. Mr. Cardin. Aye. Mr. Kramer. Aye. Ms. Duckworth. Aye. Ms. Ernst. Aye. Mr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Enhoff. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Lummis. Aye. Mr. Markey. Aye. Mr. Merkley. Aye. Mr. Padilla. Uh, I by proxy. Mr. Sanders, Aye. Mr. Shelby, Aye. Ms. Stabenow, Aye. Mr. Sullivan, Aye. Mr. Whitehouse, Aye. Mr. Wicker, Aye. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the yeas are 20, nays are zero. Say that again. The yeas are 20, nays are zero. We say this one more time. Yeah. <laughs> the yeas are 20, nays are zero. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I thought that's what you said. All right, everybody. Congratulations. Good work. This is not the end, uh, but it's a good beginning. All right. Thank you all. And we have, Mr. wait, wait. Chair, we Mr. Have, Chairman. We have, uh, the, uh, Mr. Chairman. Wait. Mr. Chairman. So, do we have one more thing to do? Yeah, I think we have the GSAs to do. I think that can, well, hold, just hold on. Final business? Yeah. Ah, final business, if you will just bear, bear this with me for just a Mr. moment. Mr. Chairman, before moving on, no. I just wanted to say congratulations and ask the unanimous consent that my full statement be put in the record about this legislation, but I agree this is a very important uh, step in the right direction, so congratulations. Yes. Thanks, thanks so much, without objection. Uh, the final uh, business before us uh, today is to consider 10 resolutions relating to the uh, General Services Administration. As members of this committee know, since the Public Buildings Act of 1959, this committee and its predecessor committees have approved GSA prospectuses by committee resolution. The purpose behind this process is to create a congressional role in the GSA process that is not unduly burdensome or time consuming. The resolution we consider today, the resolutions we consider today are GSA leases throughout the country. Members have had the opportunity to review these documents and I believe them to be non-controversial. Does anyone have another, a different view? Are we okay here? I think we are. All righty. Therefore, we'll, re, uh, uh, we'll consider uh, the resolutions and block, and we'll do it by voice voting now. Move to report favorably the 10 GSA resolutions. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. We're on a roll. The ayes have it. And with that, the voting portion of this meeting is concluded. Anybody, uh, before we turn to statements from uh, senators on matters that we have reported today and their amendments, I want to acknowledge, again, the support the, that the transportation legislation has earned. The legislation is supported by safety groups like the National Safety Council, business organizations like the Association of Equipment Manufacturers, and professional organizations like the American Society of Civil Engineers. Other critical transportation stakeholders like uh, stakeholders like Ashto and the Bike League are also supporting the legislation. I ask unanimous consent to submit for the record a number of letters of support for this legislation, legislation including from the organizations I just mentioned. Is there objection? Hearing none. I'm now happy to re recognize anyone uh, on this committee who wishes to make a statement on the nominations or the legislation that we just approved or to speak on any of the amendments that uh, were filed or adopted. Anyone? Mr. Chair. Senator Carton. Senator Ernst, yes. Okay, Senator Ernst and then thank Senator you. Cardin. Senator Ernst, please proceed. Yes, thank you. And before I talk about my amendment, I do want to thank Chairman Carper and Ranking Member Capito for 
the leadership on this historic uh, infrastructure legislation. And I also want to thank the rest of my colleagues on the committee for providing their valuable input as we develop this bill. Our success this morning uh, shows that we can accomplish a lot when we work together and focus on real transportation infrastructure. My amendment, Ernst Number 1, makes grant funding available for biofuel fueling infrastructure in Section 1401. This section authorizes $2.5 billion in grants over five years for charging and fueling infrastructure for electric, hydrogen, propane, and natural gas vehicles, but not for biofuel. By leaving out biofuel, we're subsidizing charging infrastructure for wealthy EV owners on the coasts, while at the same time leaving our corn and soybean farmers and biofuel producers on the sidelines. This program can be more effective if a broader range of fuels are eligible for it. Neglecting to include biofuel is short-sighted and ignores the role it can play in reducing greenhouse gases in the transportation sector. Conventional ethanol already reduces greenhouse gas emissions relative to gasoline by nearly 50 percent. Advanced biofuel can reduce greenhouse gases by 70 to 100 percent and in some cases be carbon negative. Internal combustion engines will be the primary light duty vehicle for decades to come and we can't ignore solutions that provide us with low cost, lower carbon liquid fuels. Though I did not push for a vote on my amendment today, I do plan to work my, with my colleagues to see if we can work this out before the bill gets to the floor. And with that, I will yield. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And, and thanks for, uh, for your input on, uh, on this bill in any, any variety of ways. Thanks so much. Senator Cardin. And then I think uh, Senator Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, first, I just really want to underscore how proud I am of the work of this committee. Under Senator Carper and Capito's leadership, Every member of the United States Senate had the opportunity for input into this bill. Every single senator, all 100. And as a result, this is a balanced bill in the needs of all of our communities around the nation. And yes, it does contain certain advancements that some of us are very excited about, some of us are not. Uh, it contains changes uh, in some of the regulatory issues that some of us are concerned about. Some of us think it hasn't gone far enough but it is the way the committee should operate. Taking the advice of all members, working it, and the staff worked overtime to make sure that it worked what we wanted to do, checked with the, with the transportation experts to make sure that the provisions would be uh, sensible and, and, and coordinated. Uh, and at the end of the day, we have a bill that enjoyed the unanimous support of this committee. What an achievement. So I just first really want to underscore how proud I am to have been part of this effort. I want to talk about three areas. I already mentioned the funding levels where I, I think we should be looking at a more transformational number. But I want to talk about three other issues that are to be important. I mentioned during the offering and the amendment, the reconnecting of communities. And that to me is, is important because of the equity issues of transportation programs over many generations. Bad, gener bad transportation programs can really hurt communities, and we've isolated so many communities. And they're generally minority communities, communities that are trapped. Good transportation programs can empower communities, can provide jobs. So as we look to expand transportation opportunities, we need to go back and do something about the equity. So I congratulate the chairman for his connecting community legislation, the pilot program that you that you authored. I was proud to be one of your co-sponsors. And you're right, we have money in, in, in this bill to, to advance that program. And thank you very much for being able to, to negotiate that. I just believe we're, we're gonna have to do more. It's, it's, it, these are scars to community and they isolate communities. And I can tell you in Baltimore uh, what it's done in making communities much more vulnerable. We, we have work to do. The second area that I would like to see us do more advancement is the recognition that we want to build new roads, we want to build bridges, but we've got to take care of it. We've got to maintain our existing infrastructure. And too often, the maintenance gets pushed to a side because of the pressure to do more and build more. And we need to make sure that our local transportation officials have a game plan to maintain the structures that we're participating in building. And so I think we have to have a, a stronger focus on the maintenance of the transportation infrastructure. 
And the last that came out today during Senator Markey's amendment, and, and, and Senator Capito, you're absolutely right. We have a, a, a really exciting program under transportational pro alternative program that gives the ability to do the connecting of communities through whether it's bicycle paths or whether it's trails or whether it's uh, channeling or uh, those types of issues. And it's a good program. But there is frustration, as Senator Markey's amendment pointed out, with local officials as to how they direct that money going through the normal transportation allocation process with the state, which can be cumbersome at times. So I, I know that we want to maintain maximum flexibility to our states, and I support that. But I think there's a, there's a balance here that we can have to get the TAP program more sensitive to the local communities. And I look forward to working with this committee as we try to address those issues moving forward. Uh, so bottom line, great work. I'm proud to be part of the committee. Look forward to, to the additional challenges that we're all going to have to confront. I think it's safe to say we could not have done it without you. So thank you very much, Ben. All right, Senator, Senator Kelly. Captain. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, Ranking Member Capito. It's great to be here today to work on and advance such landmark legislation championed by both Republicans and Democrats to revitalize America's infrastructure. This bill invests in our national transportation infrastructure at a historically high level. And most importantly, the bill will transform our future. And as somebody who at any moment is about to become a grandfather, Preparing for our future is very important. Uh, investing in our surface transportation is more than building new roads and bridges. It's a foundation for job creation, a flourishing economy, and connectivity for decades to come. The funding increase for surface transportation shows our shared commitment to a better American future. And I'm proud of how our work together on this committee accomplishes this. The Surface Transportation Reauthorization Act of 2021 is critical for the state of Arizona. Like most of the country, we are in recovery mode from this devastating pandemic. But Arizona is still experiencing record-setting growth. In fact, Arizona is the second fastest growing state in the U.S. And this means that a down payment on our infrastructure is more important than ever. To support Arizona's growing population, we have to build up sustainable, affordable transportation infrastructure. After talking with Arizona mayors and business groups and others, I work to include priorities for our state in this legislation. There's more work to be done on infrastructure, but this legislation is the first step of bringing billions of dollars to Arizona to move transportation infrastructure projects forward. Projects like the I-10 expansion to make the corridor more safe and efficient, like I-11 to finally connect Phoenix and Las Vegas and needed improvements and upgrades to rural roads and bridges. This legislation thinks ahead to navigate the climate challenges that we face. It invests in transportation in infrastructure resiliency with a particular emphasis placed on heat reduction programs, a major factor in Arizona. It dedicates funding to support Arizona's aging bridge infrastructure, as well as expansions and improvements. For tribal communities, the bill delivers critical funding to establish a tribal high-priority projects program, creates an Office of tribal, tribal Government Affairs, and increases the overall funding in the Tribal Transportation Project Authorization. And it also includes bipartisan priorities that I advocated for, including the ROCKS Act, that I introduced with Senator Portman, which would make federal transportation projects more sustainable, efficient, and beneficial to local economies by advancing the use of locally sourced aggregate resources like sandstone gravel. And also, what was included here was funding to help states, metropolitan planning organizations, and localities cover the costs associated with taking on large construction projects. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm proud to have worked with Republicans and Democrats to shape and advance this investment that will upgrade and expand the roadways Arizona's, Arizonans use to connect each and every day. And I look forward to our continued bipartisan work to invest in our infrastructure. Thank you, and I yield back. Senator Kelly, let me just say it's been a pleasure. You could have chosen any number of committees to serve on. 
Uh, speaking to the chairman, I suspect I speak for others. Thank you, and Senator Padilla for uh, choosing this committee. There have been great, great additions. Senator Padilla, you've uh, joined us, and I, I'm happy to recognize you if, if you'd like to, to, to address us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I ask unanimous consent to be recorded as present and voting yes on the Surface Transportation Reauthorization Act. Yeah, without objection, so ordered. Thank you. All right, Senator uh, uh, Capito. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, uh, Senator Cardin, too. Um, I appreciate the good hard work. I, I noticed uh, sort of on a lighter note that uh, between the, the chair and the ranking member and the chair and ranking member, we're all, we, our all last names start with C. So we'll call this the four C's. Uh, and I think uh, we've worked well together. And I think to hear the statements of, you know, Senator Kelly, ta I think, reinforced a point that, that I think is extremely important in this legislation, and that's flexibility. What works in Arizona, where his needs are and where the needs of Arizona are much, much different than what a mountainous terrain on the east, uh, more on the eastern coast, uh, such as West Virginia, not quite on the coast, but uh, on the eastern part of the Maybe country. someday. Maybe someday. <laughs> We're not, not careful. <laughs> Hope not. Hope not. We got the Chesapeake Bay, though. We got that. So, um, so I think it shows that we need to keep the flexibilities uh, for our state DOTs to be able to uh, meet, the, meet the demands uh, at, the, at the local level, and I think that is really good. But at the same time, we have a lot of common issues. This bridges issue is something that spans all 50 states. And I'm really uh, pleased because, as Senator Cardin said, we have infrastructure. We need to maintain it. Bridges, I think, is one of the things that is routinely neglected and, uh, and is becoming deteriorate, deteriorating, and I've been very concerned about that. So I just want to thank you, uh, Chairman Carper, because as most you and I know, we talk every week at least once and maybe more than that. Our staff talks constantly, and I think if we're going to ever really get this right uh, in, in this Congress, communication is the key. And we know we don't agree on certain issues, and we know we don't, we have strong feelings on each issue, but if we keep communicating and talking and listening, because you're a great listener, uh, to one another, I think we can, we can overcome some of these hurdles. But we really couldn't do it with the fine staff members that we have uh, kind of propping us up. So uh, I don't want to start getting in trouble and naming names, so we'll do that on the floor when we get this to the, to the floor. But I want to thank all of them on both sides. Uh, you all have been terrific, and I appreciate it. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I especially want to thank you for saying that I'm a great listener. I hope my wife was listening to, to, that, to that. I can't help of, you with that. I've oh, told you that before. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So, uh, joy joy uh, working with you, too. Two, ki two kids from West Virginia who grew up and uh, ended up in the United States Senate. Go figure. Go figure. Um, anyone else? Anyone else want to speak? I don't see anyone is still uh, with us. So in, in closing, I, I, I just want to say a special thanks to uh, our staffs, members of our staffs. Uh, at 2 o'clock this morning, uh, we were still up. And uh, I know some of them probably never went to, to, uh, to bed, but uh, it was well worth, uh, well worth the, the effort. And the, uh, Joe Biden likes to say all uh, politics is personal, all diplomacy is personal. And he's really right. And the, I like to say, I, 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 every night and then when I ran into people who have been married like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, I always ask them, I say, what's the secret? And I get these great answers, funny answers, but really great answers. And one of my favorite answers is, uh, is uh, the letter C. There it is again. And uh, communicate and compromise. Communicating, and I, I can't tell you how many people who've been married 60, 70 years say that you know, communicate and compromise is really important. It's also the secret for a vibrant democracy. Also the secret for a vibrant democracy. And we have just demonstrated that the two C's, communicate and compromise, and that they really are uh, critical for a vibrant democracy. So I think we've uh, done good work. I want to thank everybody, Adam. I want to thank you. And, uh, and the team you lead, Mary Francis and Rebecca Higgins and others on our transportation team. Thank you. The folks who serve with uh, Senator, Senator Cardin as our subcommittee chair with uh, Kevin Creamer and just everybody else. It's been a great, it's been a great team effort. And uh, I, uh, I wanted to say, let me see if there's anything else I need to, to cover before uh, we finish. We've, uh, let's see, what have we done here? We've sent eight uh, qualified nominees to the Senate floor, and now with the, the vote today, we've now sent eight qualified nominees to the Senate floor, and four of those have been uh, confirmed. We hope more will follow. 
In addition, we've reported two bipartisan infrastructure bills out of our committee, one bill to modernize our nation's water systems that we passed on the Senate floor with 89 votes. People still ask me, was that right? Did we really we got 89 votes for anything? 89 votes in the other bill today that will create a transportation system, I think, worthy of the 21st century. So again, thanks to, to everyone who's in this room, who's worked on uh, all this, and, and those who are, have left or are not in, or maybe within the sound of my voice, but we're grateful to, to all of you. Got plenty of work to do, but staff, uh, I think, I'm, do I need to ask for unanimous consent that staff be authorized to make technical and correct uh, and conforming changes to the legislation? I will ask uh, for that unanimous consent. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all, God bless.